Hi, we are looking at the AUD USD daily chart. Uh, this is the weekend before the markets open on Monday, 29th of April 2013. And uh, I'm using a Fibonacci retracement tool. Um, I'm using SAR, you see the dot here, parabolic SAR, and I'm using ADX. Um, Let's see um, the setup uh, that we have already studied here of the daily chart, and then we can go to the bigger time frames to get the, the, the big picture of the pair. Um, we see that the price had moved from this huge hammer candlestick here upwards. It was, it was pushed up to this point, and then we had a correction a downward move uh, that went a bit below 75 um, Fibonacci level and then it formed a hammer candlestick here the hammer uh, is a candlestick which is very a very strong gives very strong reversal signals when it is present it is formed at price extremes and it has a very small or non-existent uh, wick and um, uh, two or three times bigger than its small body uh, tail. Uh, here we have another hammer uh, which signifies reversal. We have a bullish reversal. We see the candlesticks that followed and we can confirm this reversal from the knee formation, this angle formed by um, ADX, which although is, is a bit small, it is uh, at low levels, it is significant. And it is followed by a bullish crossover of the DIs. The, the DI plus goes above uh, DI minus. Um, if we want to enter here, we can enter long and ride the trade up to this level, to 23.5, where we can exit, uh, because odds are the price won't make it up to this level. Uh, once we are here, we will monitor markets conditions, so we will decide if we will exit or continue. But um, if you want a pre-made uh, recipe for this trade, uh, then um, don't go for more. Um, two, about 200 pips are more than enough. Uh, they make a very nice profit out of this move. So um, I wouldn't jeopardize um this this profits for the possibility of of going up here um of course uh, the decision is yours now if we enter here uh we can of course wait for the new uh candlestick to open to see where the price goes there may be a gap or there may not be a gap um so if we enter here we should put our stop somewhere where there is no risk to be hit and be because there must always be a barrier between our entry point and our stop uh, ideally we should put our, our stop a few pips below the tail of this hammer candlestick where the reversal happened um, how many pips um, as many as your account can tolerate without you exceeding the risk of 3% of your account equity. Um, that means that the pips between your entry point and your stop uh, must not represent more than 3% of your account's equity. If this is not the case, then you should go to a smaller time frame. Assuming that you have no issue with your account and you can take this risk, then uh, you're going for a reward of about uh, 200 pips, which is a nice risk-reward ratio. You can make the calculations and see. Um, 
Now I will remove these objects from here and uh, I will also I will leave I will leave um, Sar and I will take this to the weekly chart where we see that we just um, yes, here we, are, we have a crossover, a bearish crossover. Uh, the PSAR dot uh, just touched the, the, the candlestick, so we are expecting um, a bearish uh, dot to appear up here and the price to go uh, down on the weekly chart. But it may not be exactly the case. We may have a few days of... Uh, of upward move before this happens. <coughs> As you can see, price is in a consolidation, in a range-bound mode, and in a consolidation. Let me take off, um, uh, take out uh, uh, ADX from the from the map, so you can we can we can use trend lines and get. Uh, better picture. I will zoom the price out. I will zoom it out. Yes. Here we are. So I can insert trend lines to give us a picture of where price is going. Now we, we don't have to be very accurate. And um, this is the weekly chart, of course. And here we are. Uh, okay. A bit better. Okay, so um, we are expecting after this consolidation to have a breakout. The breakout will be huge, either upwards or downwards. Uh, we can only assume. We can only assume that it will uh, go to this or that direction from what we see here. We may use uh, Ichimoku Kinko here to get um, a, a picture and to see the biases of the market. Let's see how things look like on the monthly chart. Yes, we have this, this consolidation here where price practically was moving sideways. And uh, we are expecting uh, a breakout here too. So let me let me take these trade lines out of the chart, and um, I will also remove SAR, and I will I will add. Mm, it's Moku. So on the monthly chart, Ichimoku shows that price will go up. Yes, we we should we should be prepared for a, a bullish breakout. That's what Ichimoku says. But at the moment, price moves sideways. Sinko span touches the price and goes horizontally. Um, there is an horizontal uh, orientation of uh, of the Tenkan Sen, the red line. Um, Kijun Sen is also forming a plateau. Uh, so we are expecting the, the breakout. On the weekly chart, we see here a uh, horizontal Kumo, the cloud. Uh, that's indicative of um, of the sideways movement of the price. Uh, the leading Kumo is bullish, but uh, horizontal, and uh, the, the edge of the leading Kumo is not sharp enough to 
to show that uh, the price will go up now. But uh, the biases are are bullish, although uh, Shinkuspan is intertwined with price action. On the daily chart, we we get uh, a, a range bound markets picture here. The leading Kumo is bullish, but we don't know what is going to happen here on this edge, on the edge of the of the Kumo. Um, a lot of uh, of indecision uh, is represented by this pointing edge here. Uh, will we have a small bearish Kumo formed for a while, or a new um, bullish Kumo will be born? We will see. Um, on the A4 chart, we had a, a strong, a strong bearish move. Now we have a reversal. Uh, this reversal here is being represented by this formation, uh, the, the lower border of the leading Kumo, and we see that the distance between Senkuspan A and Senkuspan B is getting smaller, and we may have a cross between Senkuspan A and Senkuspan B, which will give a b the birth to a new cloud, a new Kumo, a, a bullish uh, Kumo probably, uh, but at the moment, price is trapped below the Kumo, and it it hasn't even uh, tried to penetrate it. So, uh, although we get uh, some signals, some bullish signals, because because they are below the Kumo, they are weak. We had the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen cross. Um, we had. Um, uh, Kijun Sen price cross, although now price is, is uh, uh, moving uh, on the Kijun Sen. Um, a very strange picture. Uh, the uh, Chinku Span is touching the price, is going to go above the previous price, but still it will b remain below the Kumo. It has to go uh, up on the open space and even better out of the Kumo, above the Kumo, for us to be sure that this is a strong um, bullish move. Um, the H1 chart shows that um, we had a, a bullish move, but this plunge here created a bearish cloud, and now the price is trying to to escape and go upwards, but we had some bearish candlesticks and um, that caused this confusion, this oriental, uh, horizontal orientation of of the Kumo. Uh, on the M15 chart, uh, we get a, a clearly bearish picture. Uh, but uh, the Chinku span touches the price and moves horizontally. Um, Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen uh, are intertwined, moving horizontally. The leading Kumo uh, has a sharp uh, downward edge, but this is not enough to base our trend decisions. We should rather wait. We should wait. Uh, not for a few uh, candlesticks of 15 minutes, maybe for a few hours, um, maybe for a few uh, candlesticks of on the H4 chart, or even better, uh, a couple of days to make sure that the price uh, really reversed and is going upwards instead of uh, testing again. Uh, these levels down here. Thanks for watching.